philodendron. We love them for the gorgeous foliage. Did you know that of June 2024, there's 621 different types of philodendrons recorded? And philodendrons belong in the Racia family. They're the second largest group in that family after anthuriums. And have you noticed that sometimes you might find that your philodendron is not actually thriving? Well, the first part is it's important to actually understand if a philodendron is a climbing philodendron, which means that it likes to attach to uh, trees in the native habitat of the tropical rainforest and climb upwards, or is it a, a crawling philodendron, which means that it's more down the bottom on the ground level, level of the canopy of the tropical rainforest where it likes to more spread on the ground. It's important because this determines whether uh, you need to use a support pole, something like a moss pole or a coconut coil or a soil pole or something like even a plank of wood to use to support, support your climbing philodendron so it can thrive. And if you want to know if your philodendron is a climbing one or crawling one, well, generally climbing philodendrons tend to have more aerial roots, which are roots that grow on the stem uh, compared to the crawling philodendrons. They still can have it, but it's less likely. Or the other option, which is really easy, just Google it and you'll find the information there. So if you're using a, if you have a uh, climbing philodendron, using one of those support poles, what we'll do is that it will actually make the plant climb upwards, so the leaves tend to be bigger and more, uh, more lush, and the leaves tend to be, become more mature as well. Where if you're using a support pole to a crawling philodendron, well, it's a pretty much of a waste because it's like sticking a stick up your butt. It's doing the same to the phil crawling philodendron, and generally none of us like to have a stick up our butt, but if that's your thing, no problem, go ahead. But this is a, a crawling philodendron will more likely appreciate a pot that's actually more wider, so it can actually grow along the pot rather than putting a support pole where it's not really going to try and climb upwards. Have you noticed that sometimes your philodendron actually cries and you may have noticed that these water beads actually form on the leaves or they can, which is more likely to occur, accumulate at the tips of the philodendron and water droplets tend to drip, making the philodendron look like it's crying. Well, this process is called cutation, and cutation, what happens is that uh, when the roots absorb the water in the soil, the pressure in the, uh, the, the water is actually pushed up through the stem towards the leaves, and the pressure, if there's too much uh, absorption of the water, what can happen, it can build up pressure in the stem, and then the liquid is actually uh, expressed out of the leaves, and it can form into uh, beads on the leaves, or it more likely to form on the tips of the leaves there and starts to drip. Now, this is generally a, just a normal process of the plant, and it happens once in a while. Honestly, there's nothing to worry about. But if you're finding that your philodendron looks like it's crying every single time that you water it, or the majority of the time that you're watering your philodendron, I just suggest that you reduce the amount of water that you give to your Plant. This will help to reduce the amount of water in the soil so that the roots don't absorb the soil uh, too much or too quickly either. And But if it's happening, honestly, if it's happening once in a while, even like once a week, I wouldn't even bother uh, worrying about it. Have you noticed that sometimes that your philodendron develops these kind of like these reddish sticky or purplish sticky blobs that are on the actual uh, leaves or on the petioles of the uh, of the plant. Well, this what this is uh, caused from. It's called extra flow nectarines. And what it is is that sometimes philodendrons will actually produce nectar, and that will form the leaves or the petioles, and this attracts ants. And it's like a a, a neutral relationship between the plant and the ants. And it's a really, actually a really helpful 
sort of relationship because what happens is that the philodendron will provide this actual uh, nectar and the ants will actually use it which is kind of like the sugar for the ants and the ants will actually build tend to build nests near the plant and that will help to actually protect the plant from um, from uh, pests or from things like animals as well so so it's actually a very um, beneficial and symbiotic relationship between the philodendron and the ant. Now that's fantastic if you're growing your philodendron outside but most of us if we follow if I if we grow our philodendron indoors we don't really want a trail of ants growing all over the plants and the easiest way I find to actually get rid of this extra nectar is to just use a cloth damp it with just normal water and just wipe the leaves. Also, you can just go to the bathroom and just use a shower hose and clean the plant up. Or even easier, bring the philodendron outside and use the garden hole hose to actually wash the actual nectar away. Also, you might find that sometimes you buy a philodendron and you might buy the same uh, philodendron types like say a philodendron pink princess but one may produce more variegation in it compared to the other. So the, the key part to getting as much variegation in the philodendron is first of all selecting, trying to select the correct philodendron, the one that's more likely to, to give you the variegation, the one that has the better genes in it, genetics in it, so that it actually uh, produces more of that variegation. So to tell which one will be better is that before purchasing your philodendron, check each one out and you want as much variegation on the stem. So if it's a pink princess, you want as much pink on the stem or it's a white princess, as much white on the stem, that's more likely to give you more variegation because the plant has the better DNA, uh, well not DNA, but the better genetics in it to actually give you that more variegation. And to also to try and promote more better variegation is to give your philodendron as much br bright indirect sunlight as possible uh, because the less sunlight a philodendron gets, the more likely that the leaves will tend not to be variegated. And then if you find that your plant has stopped uh, producing the variegated leaves, I also suggest that you prune your philodendron and this may help to trigger more variegation to occur, especially if you trim it back to the uh, last leaf that has the variegation in it. And that's more likely to help to uh, encourage your philodendron to produce new leaves with more variegation on it. Now sometimes you might find that instead of getting these ready sticky or purplish ready sticky spots, which are the extra flow nectaries, then you sometimes end up with more like this reddish brown spots on the leaves and that tends to spread over time and they tend to be more flat. Well, that there is not extra flow of nectaries, that's actually rust spots and rust spots is very detrimental to philodendron because if it's not treated properly, it actually can kill a philodendron plant. And if you do find uh, these spots on your plant, what I suggest you to do is to use a fungal side, something like a Yates uh, fungal side gun, or, uh, and also isolate it. And when you're using the fungal side, just make sure that you uh, spray the plant on the top of leaves, underneath the leaves, and all over the stem, that you're not leaving any spots that doesn't have any treatment. And then isolate it also away from your other household plants because you certainly don't want these uh, rust spots to spread to your other household plants because it's an absolute nightmare to try, try and treat if there's a lot of plants that are being affected. And you want to repeat this process each week until you notice that those reddish uh, brown spots have stopped spreading. And then I would recommend you just give it another week of treatment before you actually bring the philodendron back to where it needs to uh, be located in the home. And if you, these are the main things that I've seen uh, about philodendrons and lots of questions on 
uh, on YouTube about philodendrons. If you have questions of your own about your philodendron, I would love to be hear about in the comment section down below. If you did enjoy this content, don't forget to help your crazy plant lady. Really appreciate your support by hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. And if you want to know how to actually propagate a philodendron, then watch this video here. I'll see you in the next video.